Welcome back everyone to another reaction video. Today we're going to dive into a brand new channel that I've never done a reaction to before. It's called Verse. It's got about 9 million subscribers, so I'm guessing many of you are already familiar with it. Uh, but I was browsing through their videos and I came across this one. Historical events you won't believe happened at the same time. I thought it might be something fun, something a little different. Um, just want to give you a heads up. If you haven't already had the chance, the latest episode of my podcast is now live. Uh, and if you saw my video from yesterday about the Christmas truce of 1914, the podcast uh, takes that information that I shared in that video and shares a whole lot more. So it's a lot more in-depth, a, a deeper dive into that topic. So if you saw the video, if you haven't seen the video, what are you waiting for? Check it out. But if you have, check out the podcast on whatever podcast platform you use, or you can just go to vloggingthroughhistory.com and you can listen to all the podcast episodes there. But let's go ahead and dive into this one. As always, the link is in the description below if you want to check it out or any of their other videos without my commentary. Factsverse presents... Historical events you won't believe happened at the same time. Number 1. 1943. The first wagon crossed the Oregon Trail the same year the fax machine was invented. You might think you're hearing that wrong, but you're not. The Great Migration of 1843... Uh okay, they meant 1843. Okay, and I've seen this one before about the fax machine. It requires us to very loosely interpret what defines a fax machine. Okay, so let's keep that in mind and see what they say here. Occurred. This was when 1,000 emigrants went to Oregon on the wagon train on the Oregon Trail. The same year, on May 27, 1843, a Scottish inventor named Alexander Bain received the patent for his invention, the electric printing telegraph. This is the grandfather of the modern fax machine that we know today. So while people were traveling to Oregon to begin a new life, somewhere else in the world, a man was taking a huge step towards new technology. Now, a couple of things we should point out here. Number one, the Oregon Trail didn't just go to Oregon. A lot of people took the Oregon Trail to get to California, for example. The Donner Party died in Cal... A lot of them, you know, they were headed to California and a lot of them died there in the Sierra Nevada Mountains. They were taking the Oregon Trail. Um, the Oregon Trail had different ways that you could go and things like that. Fantastic game from my childhood. And if you haven't already, you should definitely check out my friend Matt Beat on his channel, Mr. Beat. He and his uh, family uh, took a Tesla along the Oregon Trail. And it's a really cool video. They put a lot of work into it. You should check it out. Um, but yeah, a lot of inventions... There's a big difference between when something's predecessor was invented and when it actually becomes practically used. Obviously, nobody was using fax machines in the 1840s. Uh, you know, the same thing, I've seen the same thing said about the cell phone being invented in the 1940s, right? There's a technology that is a step towards the modern cell phone that you could say was invented in the 1940s, but the idea that people were driving around in their cars talking on phones in the 1940s, no. Um, so again, like I said, it requires a very loose interpretation of what makes a fax machine in order to say that. Number two, 2660 BC. The Egyptians were building pyramids while the woolly mammoth was still living. The Great Pyramids located in Egypt were being built from 2667 to 2648 BC. At the same time, there was still a small population of woolly men. Now, he said the Great Pyramids were being built, but those three pyramids outside of Cairo, uh, the Pyramids of Giza, they call them, they weren't all built at the same time. In fact, I think they were built a long distance from each other. I want to look this up because I feel like he maybe misled us a little bit there. Okay, so they were built a little closer together in time than I realized, between 2550 to 2490 BC. Uh, again, there, there's a lot of different um, estimates on the dates of these, uh, because we know who these pyramids were made for, um, and, and so it all depends on the estimate of when we believe that these men reigned in Egypt during the 4th Dynasty. Uh, but man, just ridiculously amazing works that, that these pyramids were. Anyway, back to it. Mammoths still alive. They were living on Wrangell Island, which is an island about the size of Delaware. 
The island is located about 90 miles off the coast of Siberia. Hmm. It's a good thing that the last of the woolly mammoths weren't living in Egypt at the time. If they were, the pyramids may never have been built due to the danger that these huge creatures possibly could have brought. So another way that I've heard this described that really puts it in perspective is that Cleopatra lived closer to the modern times and the Roman Empire is closer to today than to the building of the pyramids, which is just nuts to me, but really, really cool. Number three, 1868. You could take the London Underground to watch the last public hanging in the UK. Today, if you want to watch an execution, you have to be invited under very special circumstances. Special. This was not always the case in the UK. Up until May 26, 1868, you could watch executions. The yeah, but you know what? Here in the US, although granted, I mean, we still have the death penalty in the UK, is like most countries doesn't have it anymore. Um, but uh, I think you could see public executions in the U.S. up to the 20th century. Uh, I know that public hangings were still a thing in the 1900s. Last one was the public hanging of Michael Barrett. He was hung outside of Newgate Prison in London. Really, one of those little pet peeves I have is saying hung. Whenever you're referring to a hanging, an execution, it's hanged. I know it doesn't sound like proper English, but it is, in fact, he was hanged. That is the proper term. In front of about 2,000 people. In 1865, the Barbican London Underground Station was built near Aldersgate Street. Mm. It's actually only a 10-minute walk from the Newgate Prison. Chances are that one of the 2,000 people in attendance actually took the underground Possibly. train to watch the execution. Number 4. 1940. Many prisoners arrived at Auschwitz a few days after McDonald's was founded. Many people believe that McDonald's first opened its doors after World War II. This is because the chain didn't really take off until the war was over. The founders of the fast food chain, Richard and Maurice McDonald, opened their first restaurant on May 15, 1940, and it was located in San Bernardino, California. It was just five days after the opening of the restaurant that the very first group huh. of concentration camp prisoners arrived at Auschwitz. Yeah, um, fascinating movie if you ever watched The Founder with Michael Keaton. Um, he plays Ray Kroc, who was the guy who uh, bought McDonald's off the McDonald brothers and turned it into the national chain that we see today. Um, yeah, it didn't start out that way, and the McDonald brothers had nothing to do with McDonald's as we know it. They just founded a couple of restaurants. Uh, it's pretty cool to kind of study the history of some of these chains that are all over the world today. Here where I live in Northeast Ohio, we we are where the founding of Arby's was. Have you ever had an Arby's roast beef sandwich? Youngstown, Ohio, actually specifically Boardman, which is like 15 minutes from me, is where the first Arby's was. We actually had here uh, in the town that I live in, uh, we had the oldest uh, existing Arby's because the original one doesn't exist anymore. But the second one was here in our town. Uh, and up until maybe five years ago, it still had the old look and they just remodeled it, which was really disappointing. This was a wonderful time in history for those who love a McDonald's cheeseburger and a terrible time mm. for the prisoners. Number five, 1908. The Ottoman Empire existed the same year the Chicago Cubs won the World Series. In yeah, but the Ottoman Empire existed longer than that. Um, I, I don't know. That's a really weird correlation to make um, between the Cubs because, you know, the world's... I don't know. It's weird. The Chicago Cubs shocked the world when they finally won the World Series for the first time since 1908. Yeah, and I don't want to talk about that because I'm in, well, it's Guardians now, but an Indians fan at the time, and the Indians had a 3-1 lead in that series and blew it. When they won in 1908, it was just 10 years before World War I when the Ottomans were defeated. Six years before the start of World War I. Ten years before the end of World War I. This would mean that the 1908 win from the Cubs was older than Turkey. After that win in 1908, the Cubs went to the World Series seven times. And uh, this one's a little interesting too, because I, I wanna say 
that by that time the Ottoman Empire was being referred to as Turkey. Um, I don't know exactly when that term started being used. Somebody who knows the history better than I do, use the comment section below and let me know. Before 2016, the last time they made it was in 1945. Number 6. 1889. Nintendo was founded before Jack the Ripper was caught. Many people... Everything... I was born before Jack the Ripper was caught. My kids were born. I'm making this video before Jack the Ripper was caught because Jack the Ripper was never caught. A better way to put this would be that Nintendo was founded the year after the Jack the Ripper murders took place. People believe that Nintendo is a relatively new company. When the Nintendo gaming system was released, Nintendo's popularity exploded. The Japanese gaming company was actually founded September 23, 1889. Their first item was obviously not a video game. It was actually a deck of handmade playing cards called Hanafana. At the time, just a few weeks after Nintendo was founded, people believed that Jack the Ripper was still on the loose. They thought Well, the Jack the Ripper murders happened in the fall of 1888. Uh, now you see here the ninth Whitechapel mystery is it the work of Jack the Ripper. I've made videos on this, so I won't go into too much detail, but they're canonically considered to be five Jack the Ripper victims. Marianne Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, um, Mary Jane Kelly, and Catherine Eddowes. Um, and there's some debate about those five, but there were other murders happening in Whitechapel before and after that that may or may not have been the same killer. Um, but yeah, that'll happen a year before this. Bought this because an unidentified woman was found, and she was called the Pynchon Street Torso. This is because she was found on Pynchon Street, and police only found her torso. The rest of her body never surfaced. Number 7. 1977. Star Wars came out the same year France had its last guillotine execution. And yours truly was born. Big year. Star Wars. Last guillotine execution in France. Blogging through history was born. For years, France used the guillotine to execute the most horrible criminals. The last person to be killed this way was Hamida Pimp Killer Jean Duby. He was beheaded on September 10, 1977, for torturing and murdering a 21 year old girl. So, uh, Nazi Germany used this form of execution during World War II for some people. Um, there's actually, before France ever had the guillotine, there was something called the Maiden, which was popular in places like Scotland. It was used all the way back in the 1500s for executions. It was a, a very similar contraption to this, a little little shorter uh, in terms of the drop and things like that. Uh, but there's actually, if, if you find the need to see it, there is available a video uh, recording of... An, from a distance, so it's not real gruesome, but you can see what happens. Uh, a guillotine execution, I want to say back in the 1930s is when it happened. Um, but it's amazing how quickly it all happens. I like how quickly they just walk them up, drop them, boom, body goes into the casket, they're done. And uh, it, it's like all within like seconds. It's crazy. Nobody has been executed again after that, and Francois Mitterrand abolished the guillotine in 1981. Around the same time as the last execution in France, children in the United States were lining up to see the first installment of Star Wars. I had those toys, it they were amazing. In the United States, May 25, 1977, and in the UK on December 27, 1977. Number 8. 1971. Women in Switzerland received the right to vote the same year the United States drove a buggy on the moon. Like many countries in the world, women in Switzerland weren't always allowed to vote. It just took Switzerland much longer than most countries to allow this. They started allowing women to vote 51 years after the United States allowed it. Pretty interesting. Now, it's interesting to note that in the U.S., when the U.S. passes the constitutional amendment that allows women the right to vote, um, early in the 20th century, there were some states that were already allowing the vote. In fact, there was already a woman in Congress uh, when women got the right to vote because Wyoming had previously already allowed this and they had elected a congresswoman um, 
so kind of cool to see how that overlapped. And 65 years after Finland, it was the same time that women in Switzerland were finally allowed to line up at the poles that United States astronauts were riding around on the moon in a moon buggy. It was men driving the buggy, but it was a huge step for women in Switzerland. It wasn't long after that women started joining the space program. Women? He keeps saying Number women. Number 9. 1975. Microsoft was founded and Spain was under a fascist dictatorship. True. In April Franco. 1975, friends Bill Gates and Paul Allen founded Microsoft, which made them more money than they had ever imagined. At the same time, things in Spain weren't going so well. The fascist dictator named Francisco Franco was presiding over Spain using terror and brainwashing by controlling the media and the state education system. Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting to think, uh, you know, most people think that fascism basically was this like fad that rises up in the 1930s and then gets destroyed in the 1940s at the end of World War II. Uh, but it didn't disappear everywhere because remember, Spain kind of largely stays out of World War II. Um, and so it was never really dealt with fully there. Other countries, such as Italy and Germany, ended their fascist politics after World War II, but Spain didn't follow suit. It wasn't until people started having Microsoft computers in their homes that the fascist regime ended. Number 10. 1876. Brooklyn Bridge the Brooklyn and Bridge Custer. was being built at the same time as the Battle of Little Bighorn. This is one of the Yeah, in fact, the uh, the guy who uh, was a Washington, Washington Roebling uh, designs the the Brooklyn Bridge uh, was a Civil War veteran. And in fact, he often gets quoted in Ken Burns' series on the Civil War. The craziest historical events you won't believe happened at the same time. In one part of America, laborers were working hard to build the Brooklyn Bridge, and dying. which was the first ever steel wire suspension bridge. At the same time, in the eastern Montana Territory, the Battle of Little Bighorn was being fought. The bridge was still six years away from being finished when General Custer and his men were defeated by a Crazy Horse and members of the Arapaho, the Lakota, and the Northern Cheyenne tribes. Two completely different events were taking place at the same time in different areas of the country. At some point, we're going to have to do a video on the Brooklyn Bridge because it's a fascinating story. Uh, yeah, there were people who died. Yeah, Washington Roebling, I think it ended up being a woman who oversaw the completion of it. and uh, Just incredible techno technological breakthroughs and design and uh, just a marvel of engineering. It's really remarkable. Number 11, 1945. When Hiroshima and Nagasaki were bombed, Orville Wright was still alive. I'd go way further than that. I understand where they're going with this, right? Orville Wright... Uh, is one of the Wright brothers who invented planes. Planes dropped these bombs. But you can go way back further than that. I mean, let's remember that there were plenty of Civil War veterans who were still alive in 1945. Orville and Wilbur Wright are considered to be the inventors of the airplane. Sadly, in 1912, Wilbur passed away from typhoid fever. In 1945, airplanes were used to drop atomic bombs on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Later, Orville was asked how he felt about what had happened since he invented the airplane, and airplanes were being used to drop the bomb. He said he didn't have any regrets about inventing the plane because it would change the world forever. He did say, however, that he found it deplorable that someone used his invention to cause such great destruction. Yeah, they were causing great destruction long before those bombs were dropped. And here's the thing about the plane. There were so many other people who were working on A lot of inventions that we have today, we attribute to one person. The Wright brothers with the plane, um, Thomas Edison, the light bulb and the phonograph and things like that. Uh, Alexander Graham Bell with the telephone. But most of these things were either also being invented by other people at the same time and they just didn't get credit for it in time or didn't get the patent for it, uh, or the inventors we credit were building off of other people's work that other people were also building off of, that most of these inventions, if they hadn't been invented by those people, would have very quickly been invented by somebody else. If the Wright brothers hadn't come up with their flights at Kitty Hawk in 1903, other people were doing it too. 
Uh, some people may have done it before that. But it definitely, the plane was going to get invented one way or the other. The telephone was getting invented one way or the other. The light bulb had existed for a long time. Edison just perfected it, and he wasn't alone in doing the research that made that possible. Number 12. 1912. Ecstasy was invented the same year the Titanic sank. On April 14, 1912, the Titanic hit an iceberg in cold waters and it began to sink. Not just cold waters, below freezing waters. The water was like 28 degrees. When you have salt water, salt water doesn't freeze at the same temperature. Plus it's the ocean, so you know, it's below freezing. The ship was considered to be unsinkable. Therefore, the designers didn't think to put enough lifeboats on board for all of the passengers. Because of this, 1,503 people who were on board died. It's also important to note that it wasn't a matter of just thinking it was unsinkable. There were a lot of designs like a double hull bottom, things like that, that they felt not necessarily that it was completely unsinkable, but that it would take so long to sink. They'd have plenty of time to get there. Uh, and the Californian was close by and probably could have rescued a lot of those people, but that's a story for another day. Um, they just weren't required by law to have more lifeboats than they had. They were within the law with what they had. Many drowned or perished after exposure to the freezing cold waters. That same year, MDMA, also known as ecstasy, was first synthesized by scientists in Germany. It was originally created to be an appetite suppressant for people struggling with their weight. Really? A year later, while families were dealing with the loss of their loved ones on the Titanic, Merck patented the MDMA. They decided against marketing it, however, for undisclosed reasons. Number 13. Huh. 1428. Oxford University existed for hundreds of years before the Aztec Empire was founded. According to historians, students were learning at Oxford University as early as 1096. By 1249, the university grew into a fully operational university, complete with halls and student housing. The Aztec civilization, located in central Mexico, is said to have come into existence in 1325. Hmm, interesting. Most people consider the Aztec... Again, it's kind of a weird comparison there. I don't know, but all right. ...empire to be ancient history, but Oxford University is much older. It I don't know that I ever thought of the Aztecs as ancient. I guess maybe we don't think much about how long they had existed before that, um, because we know the Aztecs were interacting with you know with Spanish explorers and things like that. So we know that they existed up into you know the Middle Ages and beyond. But I guess I never really thought much about when they started to exist. Not, however, the oldest university in the world. The oldest educational institution is the University of Korean which was founded in 859 A.D. in Fez, Morocco. Interesting. Number 14. 16. Yeah, I mean, it's important to note that for a lot of history, some of the great thinkers, some of the great uh, achievements in science and things like that were happening in the Muslim world, absolutely. 1642, Galileo and Sir Isaac Newton were born in the same year. Cool. The first two scientists of modern science to gain any fame were Galileo and Sir Isaac Newton, and they were born in the same year. Both men were born in 1642. They both made leaps and bounds in science. Oh yeah, well, I was born the same week as Tom Brady. And I wake up in the morning sometimes and I just want to go back to sleep and I think, how on earth is that man still playing professional football? <laughs> I get sore just looking at boxes I need to move sometimes, and he and I are the same age. It's crazy. And they were the same age. Number 15. 2005. YouTube was invented four days before Saudi Arabia's first democratic elections. Really? Most people wonder they what really they have did before elections? YouTube. You can find a video on just about any subject to make you laugh or to learn how to do something. Many people credit YouTube videos for helping them to learn how to do household repairs, how to put products... That's absolutely true because, um, like, I grew up... Growing up, my, my grandfather was an electronic technician. He fixed TVs, VCRs, things like that. And so I learned a lot of electronics growing up. And 
Uh, then when his business uh, that he worked for shut down, he started his own computer repair company, uh, and I worked for him in that, so I learned how to build computers and fix them and things like that. Um, but yeah, I've never been really much of a handyman, but YouTube has helped me like like I've learned now how to, I fixed our furnace one time and I, I've replaced our garbage disposal, stuff like that. Stuff I never would have attempted to do without a YouTube video to show me how. ...together and even put on makeup. It's also a famous platform for challenges. People challenge others to do crazy and dangerous things and then they post them on YouTube. YouTube first went live February 14th, 2005. Just four days later, something momentous occurred in Saudi Arabia. It was the very first democratic election in history for them. This was a huge step for the people of Saudi Arabia. Since there are so many people who are completely obsessed with YouTube, they might find its release much more exciting than a democratic election. Uh, and interestingly, I believe that the development of YouTube had at least some something to do with the Janet Jackson wardrobe malfunction incident at the Super Bowl, uh, which was a very early viral video. Um, and I think the folks who made YouTube were trying, like, there was some connection between the two of those things. So anyway, you can probably look that up. All right, that was pretty cool. That was interesting, a little different. If you have ones that you'd like to add, let's use this format. Use the comment section below and tell me things that you always found fascinating that happened at the same time or that existed at the same time. Let us know in the comment section below. Let's learn together. Thanks for watching.